Hello chess friends and welcome to Yazar of Chess channel and welcome to a new chess strategy and tactics video. In this video we're going to discuss the middle game stage again. Today we're going to discuss a very very important topic in the middle game stage. Today we'll try to analyze when should we go into tactical games or when should we go into positional games in the middle game stage because I think sometimes in chess we miss the opportunity to go into some tactics. Uh, we play maybe a more positional game we're trying to I don't know trade off more people pieces we're trying i don't know to improve just our position but maybe we had a really beautiful possibility to strike and we missed it and then of course you get home you played a bad game in the tournament and then you say oh man why didn't i play that or otherwise sometimes we're rushing with some tactics without recognizing that the game is basically not tactical because sometimes we're rushing we're thinking we're, we're having something there and then you go again again home analyze your game and then you say okay i didn't have anything i had uh, maybe a more positional game where i should have kept it calm where i should maybe trade off more pieces where i should just try to improve uh, my position somehow and that's why i think it's really really one of the toughest topics in chess to solve and i found a really really a beautiful position that explains um uh, really um uh, the reading of positions i think uh, somehow um to read the position is the toughest thing and i think it's a perfect perfect example here stockfish versus avalanche in this particular position uh white to move maybe just for fun if you like try to see now the best conscience here for white i'm pointing out it's not like white is winning the game immediately i just want you here to find the best conscience for white so just for fun try to solve now this uh this position Otherwise, let's now dive into this position because let's read this position. Let's discuss uh, this position because there are many, many things that have to be said about this particular setup. So, okay, let's watch white and black strength. Let's see now black strength, our opponent's strength. He has, of course, the bishop pair, but when you think about it harder, this bishop pair is not so dangerous because this bishop pair is actually out of game this bishops are not doing anything uh, first of all the dark bishop is paralyzed by uh, white pawns on both sides also uh, b b black slice square bishop is of course targeting something but it's actually aiming into air it's not doing anything you would love to have maybe this uh, light square bishop there somewhere maybe on on e4 where it could maybe attack the knight where it could maybe attack the pawn so this bishop's activity is not so good for black so actually the main strength of blacks is actually the main weakness of, of blacks also what we should discuss is actually that the queen on a6 is out of game it's far away from the action so you see already two weaknesses we have noticed now in black's camp the third weakness that black has here that black uh, has not competed so far on the c file so you see black already lost uh, the c file uh, where the rooks are of course are attacking on the only open file and also the fourth i would say main weakness is the weakened king the king is so far well protected but uh, it is a little bit misplaced usually in this fianchetto setups you're having the darko bishop here you're having the rook on f8 and maybe the king on g8 usually this is a solid setup for black now the king on g7 is also a little, a little bit exposed so when we analyze now we can agree i think that we have here four main weaknesses in black's camp and in in the beginning this position is a seemingly positional battle but actually it's not so it's actually a great tactical battle because sometimes when we watch our own position we could be misled by uh by our own minor pieces usually the player with the knight and the bishop is trying to play it calm uh is trying to go of course more into positional battle is maybe trying somehow to trade off this dark square bishops and go maybe with the knight versus bishop in into a fully end game stage where white could maybe exploit uh, the dark square problems but it's not so easy to do that so that's why let's see now option and you see now how every every positional option that white will try is not working here actually uh white has to try a tactical tactical shot here in this particular game so because we we have recognized that black is here four four main uh main disadvantages in the position so let's see now for instance the possibility of b4 as i said this seems logical because you you're trying of course to trade off your dark uh, bishop for opponents dark square bishop and go maybe into a slightly better end game where we have as i said mentioned uh, uh where we mentioned that we could maybe exploit the dark square problems in black's camp but actually after move b4 black doesn't have to take black and pass through with the move a4 and suddenly 
you're one that have uh, problems now in the position suddenly your dark school bishop on d2 is paralyzed is neutralized by its own uh, pawns and now black in one moment will even occupy your main weakness now in the position it's of course the c4 square this c4 square will be occupied for sure with the support of the pawn with the support of the bishop you're getting i think now yourself positionally destroyed uh, by black's activity let's see now different options you can maybe try here i don't know 90 g5 seems also tempting but it's actually not working because you're allowing your opponent to play rook to c8 uh, to compete finally on the c file and now you have lost your main strength um, that we have talked about you had the c file you competed earlier for the c file now uh, black can compete and suddenly again it's not a, a good position anymore for for white even if you try i don't know something like rook to c3 seems also logical to maybe i don't know double up the rooks on the c file then bishop to e2 could lead again into some positional problems for yourself because after something like i don't know rook from a to c1 uh, we can immediately take out the knight bishop to f3 queen to f3 and you see now you're again uh, having this bad bishop although maybe this pawn can be taken but i wanted to show one of the good positional ideas for black black is hoping to get rid of the life school bishop for your knight on f3 and suddenly black has the better bishop here on e7 against your really, really weak bishop on d2 even if you maybe play the most active move rook to c7 you're simply getting kicked away with bishop to d8 and you have to again retreat again bishop to e2 is going to happen again uh, you didn't gain anything while playing positionally but that's why when we analyze in the beginning the four main disadvantages in the position actually you, we should really recognize that we should go into a tactical game although you have a knight and a bishop against the bishop pair and actually the best move here is to play the move f5 immediately immediately destroying black's defense because as i said black has too many weaknesses the rooks are out of game uh, the bishops are not good the queen is out of game the king is already exposed on the square g7 f5 a great move let's see options now for instance you're trying e takes f5 seems logical because maybe the queen could be useful in the defense but now it's time to play a rook to a rook to c7 even if you get attacked now with the move bishop to d8 we can go now with rook from a to c1 and for instance you're trying bishop to c7 rook takes c7 i'm not sure how you're going to solve all of this um, all of the star square problems in the position you're trying maybe to attack the rook we can escape with our rook and now maybe trying to lock it then queen to d3 but i'm pointing out with bishop to g5 bishop to f6 you're getting simply destroyed on dark squares for sure so this is not working even if you try i don't know queen to b6 immediately without taking the rook on c7 immediately then again a rook to c8 we can go for this one and even if you try to win the exchange maybe in this tactical sequence again you're getting destroyed on dark squares. look at this bishop e7 queen to f8 knight to g5 dirty dirty position to handle even after knight to f7 you can get checked just one line that i've analyzed at home of course black and white don't have to play the game like this but i wanted to show you how really, really you're getting exposed on dark squares if you in any case give up uh, the dark square bishop or the rook so that's why uh here in the original game between stockfish and avalanche uh black tried g takes f5 but look at this this is now completely different story you gave up a pawn but now the king is again exposed here on the g file on dark square so here again stockfish tried this idea rook to c, uh, c7 <clears throat> again black attacked the rook but now again doubling up the rook even if you try bishop to c7 we don't have to even pick up the bishop immediately we play just queen to g5 and then you're getting simply destroyed again on dark squares too much pressure here to handle for black so after rook from a to c1 uh here avalanche tried queen to b6 but now again this idea rook to c8 rook takes uh, rook takes c8 and now uh here a4 uh, black is trying desperately somehow to open the position with the bishop pair but now stockfish simply took and now after uh, bishop to c4 it seems so that the rook is locked out now but now a simple a5 attacking the queen look at this uh, queen to b3 queen to f4 and even if you try i don't know something like bishop to e7 then rook to h8 king to h8 and now queen to h6 is winning the game we can of course play knight to g5 threatening checkmate if you take it out then again this queen is coming into game also bishop to g5 is working so you're getting again destroyed on dark square for sure as i said let's go back in the uh, um, into this position so in the beginning it seems so that we should play a really calm game we should not rush because we are the one that don't have the bishop pair but actually when you really recognize 
the main weaknesses in your opponents can when you really recognize that he is the one in trouble then even tactics are working with him with f5 risky move of course you have to calculate some stuff but i think sometimes we don't even consider this types of moves because we're too scared because we're thinking just about our i don't know minor pieces that we have on the board as i mentioned usually with the knight and the bishop you should not rush but it's a perfect example how you could be misled uh, by your own pieces and now you get the c file attack you get an endangered king you, we saw that in some lines black lost a couple of moves with the queen just in order to bring it into the game rook uh, rook activities are not working here because you're already getting challenged that's i think the most important thing here to say so okay i hope that you enjoyed this short analysis i'll do this uh now more uh we'll discuss positions where we'll discuss peace activity uh breakthrough ideas uh, other tactical issues and also other positional nuances in the game i hope that you enjoyed this one because it's really really great example how we should uh, worship sometimes more tactics than uh, positional play and okay if you want to see more examples like this check out our basics in chess series and also become our masters in uh, become master in chess series here in my youtube chess channel and if you like this content hit the subscribe button see you soon with some more videos and what do we say in the end chess is the best of course